Sahelanthropus is on the move. The instruments on the support chopper are all malfunctioning. And Eli's acting strangely for some reason. Something's not right. Boss, for now, just get away from that thing. Hurry! Spike on the RWR. Strange PRF. What's wrong? Control lost. Can't maintain RPM. We're settling. Lost for revenge?
Cypher will rewrite the records. And I will vanish from human memory. But the thirst for revenge that I have planted will infest the system! No one can stop it now! Sahalanthropus will unleash that thirst unto the future! Major... I'm burning up! Boss, get out of there!
Let's see Skullface. Where's the other? Very close to you. Self. Mission complete, boss.
Anyone can give up his fight by laying down arms. But the feeling of holding a gun, that we'll never forget. Like our lost limbs, the sensation lingers. in missing hands. We stand tall on missing legs. We stride forward on the bones of our fallen. Then, and only then, are we alive. This pain is ours, and no one else's. The secret weapon we wield, out of sight. We will be stronger than ever for our peace. Sahalanthropus will unleash that thirst unto the future. Those were his last words. Cause. <laughs> Pretentious to the end. Still. Doesn't feel like this is over. And I'll never be whole again.
Attention! Diamond Dogs! Even with Skullface dead, our brothers are unavenged. And the phantom pain he brought us lives on. Cypher is still out there. We know they've planted spies, parasites among us. Watch the man to your left, to your right. Assume nothing. Report everything. It's the only way to protect ourselves. From here on out, enemies right here in our midst and they will get no mercy unit function is dead our pain is still right with us we need we need more strength we need more men diamond dogs needs to be bigger Missions have come in, too. We still have a long road ahead of us. Mission list Even with updated. Dead, our pain is still right with us. We need... We need more strength. We need more men. Diamond Dogs needs to be bigger. Missions have come in too. We still have a long road ahead of us. The agent that the CIA had working for them inside OKB Zero has gone missing. We've been given the job of finding and extracting him. The target learned of XOF's plans to use vocal cord parasites and had hidden himself with the CIA's Mujahideen allies. But following Skullface's death, the Soviets retook OKB-0 and all contact with the target was lost. He may have tried to go back to OKB-0, but even Langley isn't sure what's going on. After all, they've never even learned of Skullface's plan. That's probably what they want to get out of the man once he's extracted. But we can't allow Langley to learn of the existence of the vocal cord parasites. That's why I want you to bring the target out, boss. Once we have him, we can report him dead and keep him on base. All contact with Langley is being conducted through a cutout. Our reputation should remain intact. As for the reward, it's already in the hands of the cutout. All you have to do is get the job done. Just like always.
find and extract the missing CIA agent. The target was laying low with the friendly Mujahideen during the vocal cord parasites incident. The man headed back to OKB-0 after the Soviets recaptured it. Check the target's VI on your iDroid. I just received word from the R&D team and the transport team out of Afghanistan. They finished installing Sahelanthropus on the base. It's ours now. All right. Don't let any of the staff touch that thing. Especially Emmerich. Of course. That guy's crush on Sahelanthropus is beyond a joke. Guess he really wants to see his tech stand on its own two legs this time. That's not gonna happen. I know it. So you've got no plans to make it operational again? Damn right. Boss, I want to hear it straight from you. Hear what? What the hell do you want with that thing? The drive is busted. It's not like it has a nuke on board. Even if the metallic archaea could turn it into a nuclear weapon, all it can do is self-destruct. Cephalanthropus just isn't a weapon anymore. It'll draw unwanted attention without even being a deterrent. I know. The weapons development strut sank two feet under that thing's wake. That's one year's drop in a single night. We've started on reinforcing the strut, but there's no guarantee it'll hold up if a storm hits. I know that, too. Boss, why keep it? It's a mark. Uh, us diamond dogs, we don't have a country to call home. That means we have no past, nothing to prove that we lived. Every one of us threw it all away when we came here. Sahelanthropus is a symbol to show that the likes of us brought at least one crisis to its end. A mark in history. So we can't just fade away. It's of no practical use to us. But we still need it. A symbol of what we've done. I'm glad I sounded you out on this. Snake, on behalf of all of us, I want to thank you. I don't need gratitude. I need security. Keep Emmerich away from that thing. Roger that. such a weapon itself. 
But in reality, XOF and Langley don't have a collaborative relationship. And Skullface was not working for America. Still, I can't blame the man for being afraid. After laying low with the Mujahideen, he tried to cut his ties with the U.S. and return to the Soviet military. But along the way, someone came after him, and he was forced back into hiding. Could have been remnants of XOF looking to silence him. And you know the rest. He doesn't seem to know much about the parasites, but nevertheless, it'd be too dangerous to hand him over to Langley or the Soviets. We'll keep him here as originally planned. But when neighboring Angola and Mozambique became socialist countries in 74, South Africa felt hounded into a corner. So it accelerated its nuclear program to protect itself. Three years later, the Soviets discovered a test facility. And two years after that, an American satellite observed a flash in the southern Indian Ocean. It said this was South Africa conducting a nuclear test with the help of a certain ally. Skullface used the situation in South Africa to get this ally to lend a hand. They both wanted nukes, so it was a mutually beneficial relationship. On the surface, anyway. I figure South Africa started getting serious about nuclear weapons production in 75. In 74, the government was still able to get by with bluffing that it had a nuclear arsenal. But the year after? Word spread that an independent armed group in the Caribbean was crushed by Cypher for possessing a WMD. That's right, boss. What happened to you and your men was the reason South Africa decided to push ahead with nuclear development. A force independent of any country getting its hands on a nuke. That was a threat to the existence of countries everywhere. It wasn't just South Africa. Your presence pushed a lot of countries to get nukes. The world was scared of you. You were a threat to more than just the Cold War. If nations are gears in a machine, you have the power to smash them loose and watch the whole world grind to a halt. Boss, you can now give the order to develop or dispose of nuclear weapons from your iDroid. With a nuclear deterrent, even if you're discovered while infiltrating a rival PF's FOB, most PF's won't dare retaliate. But you, of all people, know how dangerous it can be to have nuclear weapons. So will you add nukes to our arsenal as a deterrent? Or will you take them away from other PF's and dispose of them to help build a world that's free of nuclear weapons? I'll leave that decision up to you.
remove our suspicions about Emmerich. Head to the central base camp in Afghanistan and recover that AI pod. It's time we purge Diamond Dogs of that traitorous parasite once and for all. You said that the nuke Skullface was trying to spread around the world were equipped with a failsafe. Something that could shut them down at will. His will. Quite so. After all, he needed a guarantee that a fire wouldn't simply turn the weapons back on him. So how can they be stopped? The criticality Please trigger, a fire that is, the detonator, is a complete black box design. Any attempt to dismantle it causes it to melt in seconds, using the corroding archaea. The design ensures that no detonation is possible unless it disengages the lock. So he had a way to disengage it remotely. Precisely. The client simply presses a button. At that moment, the detonator begins transmission with a surveillance satellite. The satellite reports to him how the client is trying to use the nuke. If he does not object, the lock is disengaged. But if it's a risk to him in any way... The detonator melts down. The same is true if detonation does not occur within a preset time after the lock is disengaged. The nuke is rendered useless. Who the hell would buy something with strings attached like that? The client would never know complete. until the moment they actually try to use it. Most likely, you would have explained the time delay as the detonator's needing time to activate. And he only intended to sell to technologically primitive groups in the first place. Let me guess. He claimed it was defective and offer a replacement. Shadier than a used car salesman. Skullface shakes your hand like a friend. Using the other to control you like a puppet. This is how he works. Stay back. It's too dangerous. Hey. Back up, kid. I said no. You have to stay back. Some things can't be helped. Back to your quarters. What's going on? Shabani. Mayaka Nine Kingo Ya. Shabani. It's down there. Hey! The tank at the bottom is filled with chlorine disinfectant. One whiff and you'll suffocate. Don't even. Could you let it fall down there anyway? Down there, and it is over. Boss! Hey, listen to me! There is no way to recover the body.
What kind of stunt was that? Trying to panic us. This is yellow cake that Cypher was having the PF's transport. Before we met you, the boss recovered it from a truck crossing the savannah. Are there metallic archaea inside it? Yes, the archaea metabolize uranium-235 to subsist. They must be stored inside yellow cake, or they cannot survive. So those biological traces we took for impurities were actually the real cargo. Of course they are deactivated so they do not trigger a sudden enrichment. They are like baker's yeast. Yet, they do gradually enrich the uranium as they feed. I imagine you detected weapons-grade traces. Yeah, we did. And the malachite that was loaded on the truck had traces of uranium in it, too. <laughs> so that's the flower, huh? Skullface was gonna sell do-it-yourself new kits. The uranium enriching Archaea complete with the user's manual. And the ores with the uranium could be sourced by the client or provided by Cypher. Even the trace amounts buried in common ores can be enriched to weapons grade uranium by the metallic Archaea. Proving that must have been the most important factor of the trials. That and the ability to successfully prevent detonation. So if the amounts of uranium in the ores are low enough, they can get past any inspection. And you only need a tiny amount of the Archaea to act as the yeast. No great challenge to smuggle that either. The first step towards saturating the world with nukes. His plan. That was not my intention. Hmm. <laughs> my only goal in developing the metallic Archaea was to save the Diné. What made you think a tool for creating undetectable nuclear weapons would save your people? After 70 years, the Diné reclaimed the Navajo Nation from which we were banished. We bore all the hardships of poverty. But we were proud to live off the land we called our own. But in the moment the atomic bomb was dropped on Hiroshima, everything changed. I don't get it. The nuclear arms race between the U.S. and the Soviet Union began with the end of the Second World War. Suddenly, there was a massive demand for uranium. And it was our ill fortune that the ground beneath the Navajo Nation was rich with uranium ore. The Black Anna government set up mine after mine, and many of the Diné worked them. Never informed of any danger. Every day, they went to work with no protection. The slag was simply piled out in the open. When rain fell, uranium traces left behind would seep out, and when the ground dried, it was blown about as dust. Land and water were contaminated, irradiated. Many of us became sick and died. That pain lives on today. 
this day. I had no idea. Wanting more than anything to revive the land my forebears left to me. I was delighted upon discovering microbes that eat uranium. If they could be domesticated. I believed we could rid our land of uranium. Were you successful? No. The research called for funding on a colossal scale. But nobody was willing to invest with no prospect of a return. And that's when Skullface showed up. Correct. I can save you and your people. We share the same will. That is what he said to me. And I believed him. Plagana forced me to abandon my uranium cleanup work and focus on nuclear weapons. And he held all the Diné hostage. Today, the uranium mines within the reservation are finally closing down. It is simply less expensive now to source uranium overseas. New victims, different places. But uranium is a tactical resource. To rely on a foreign country for it is... a difficult decision to make. And he was in the perfect place to influence that decision. He could have condemned your people to the mines forever. The contamination comes not only from uranium. The fallout from the Nevada nuclear tests also settled on our lands. As if our fortune were not already bad enough. We are also downwinders. To save the Diné, I must complete my original research.